Regardless, the defense still maintains that Miss Kira did utter that incantation and make herself reappear. Now the question is, for what reason? If she really didn't have to use that spell, then why use it in the first place? If I can find the answer to that question, then this entire case will start to unravel. Most fascinating. Very well. Allow us to hear this theory of yours. Tell the court why it was necessary for the witch to appear at the crime scene. Well, we're still in the game. Once you eliminate the impossible, whatever remains must be the truth. The reason Miss Kira reappeared at the scene of the crime was... Cover up her crime? Explain yourself, Sir Tophead. You have stated that Miss Kira had no reason to reappear. However, the situation changed and it became necessary for her to show herself. Isn't that right, Miss Kira? Huh? What are you talking about? I, I have no idea what you mean. It would seem the defense must clarify their argument with evidence. Mr. Wright, I believe that Miss Kira did not intend to reveal herself at the crime scene. Rather that something occurred which forced this young lady to make herself reappear. What was so important that she had to reappear and risk being spotted? Defender. Tell the court why it would have been necessary for the witch to appear at the crime scene. Take that! Miss Kira, you usually wear glasses, is that correct? Huh? It's like I already told you, I lost my glasses a few days ago. Are you absolutely sure about that? Or did you not in fact lose them tonight during the crime? Uh, of course not. I'm just a go, see? <laughs> Perhaps you accidentally dropped them while you were committing the crime. Then as you were attempting to make your escape, you noticed they were gone. Therefore, you made yourself reappear in order to search for your missing glasses. No! Objection! How absurd! Such baseless, con baseless con conjecture. Eh? What you propose is fundamentally flawed. What do you mean? Let us assume hypothetically that the witch did in fact drop this evidence. That does not explain what purpose it would serve for her to make herself reappear. It would still make more sense for her to escape under the cover of darkness. Unfortunately, Inquisitor Barnum, such a plan was simply not possible. What? Mr. Wright, do you understand what I'm suggesting? Yeah. He means the reason Miss Kira made herself reappear at the crime scene. It was for me to save it so I don't fail with my last life. This is it. Defender, enlighten us. Why did the witness feel the need to make herself reappear? The answer is simple, Your Honor. Someone must have found her glasses. That's not possible. There are no reports of glasses having been found anywhere near the crime scene. But what if some heartless witness found them and decided to take them home? I say, I'm not heartless, Cretan. Snowy and I were only interested in milk, not some useless pair of glasses. Look here, Bluey. Do I look like the kind who would take someone else's stuff like that? Absurd. That was quite the all-out attack. I guess that means I was wrong, huh? 
We can end this in one fell swoop. Now the mystery. Let's give this a bit more, shall we? I got it. Defender, enlighten us. Why did the witness feel the need to tip? Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> that was funny, though. <sighs> she broke her glasses. The answer's clear, Your Honor. The lenses on her glasses must have broken. Clear, you say? Clear as day. How else do you explain the fact she's not wearing them right this minute? Perhaps your point is not as clear as you thought it was. Uh, <laughs> I like how they will do the thing when I fail. Okay. <laughs> the answer is simple, Your Honor. She couldn't find her glasses. She could not find them? If you've noticed, she's still not wearing her glasses right now. Objection! Hold a moment, Sir Blue Knight. What does that have to do with anything? That's right. It doesn't change a single thing. Objection! That's where you're wrong, in fact. It changes things quite a bit. Tonight, the two victims were engulfed by flames courtesy of a magic spell. That very instant, four witnesses saw the flames erupt at the scene. It was at that point that something you didn't expect occurred. You suddenly lost your glasses. That's right. You were scared that if your glasses were discovered at the scene of the crime, you would be suspected of being a witch. Objection! But foolishness, even if her glasses were found. She could simply have explained that she dropped them there days before the crime happened. Objection! I'm afraid that is not a possibility, Inquisitor Barnum. What did you say? If you recall, it had been raining quite heavily at the crime scene beforehand. Had she stated that she dropped her glasses before the crime, then naturally, one would expect the glasses to be soaked in water and covered in mud. However, the rain had already stopped at the crime at the time of the, the crime itself was committed, in other words. One look at the pair of clean, dry glasses would reveal she had dropped them later, thus implicating her as the witch. No! I should have known I was perfecting my rainfall rending technique in the forest. And not once during the rainfall did I see that flower maiden traveling along a nearby path. That's not all. In order to frame Miss Cantabella as the witch, you needed to leave the witch's scepter behind at the scene of the crime. I, I see. That would be the most definitive evidence that she is the witch. The objective here was to have somebody else discover the staff at the scene. Unless that person was I. However, no doubt you came to realize that one can deduce which spells were used simply by examining the magic gems on the scepter. In this case, see that the witch must have used Demir to vanish from sight and make her escape. That's why, Miss Kira, you were left with no option but to reappear at the crime scene. That was the only way for you to avoid suspicion if someone were to discover your glasses at the crime scene. By reappearing, you'd be able to explain that you simply dropped your glasses when you rushed to see what had happened. Double point! What do you have to say to that, Miss Kira? Uh oh. You know, I've let you both ramble on and on, but playtime is over. So? So that's it, then? I'm a witch because I dropped my glasses? I must have said it how many times now? I lost my glasses days ago. Were you even listening? I'll say it again. Over a million times! I lost my glasses! I lost my glasses! Do you like evidence, Sir Defender? Do you love proof, Sir Top Hat? Then prove I dropped my glasses at the crime scene! Ha! You can't prove it! In other words... You Damn. lose. See, psycho. That is correct. Proving such a thing would indeed be impossible. To prove that the witness dropped her glasses at the crime scene, 
What say you, Inquisitor Barnum? Tis indeed a question of proof, my lord. These glasses have been missing from the very beginning. The Knights of the Inquisition found no trace of these glasses anywhere near the crime scene. Therefore, this witness cannot in any way be accused of being a witch. You heard the man. B but we were so close. That girl is a witch. I can't anyone else say that. What should we do, Professor? Uh-oh. Uh <laughs> well, it would seem the young lady has finished what she had to say. Wouldn't you agree, Mr. Ed? <laughs> yes, it certainly looks that way, Mr. Layton. What the? What's with that face? Do you find something funny here? It is as you said, Inquisitor Barnum. Explain. The defense raises just one further question. Why were you unable to find those glasses? I. What do you mean? You must have searched the area quite thoroughly, looking for them. And yet even now, the knights have been unable to locate those glasses. Did you ever wonder why? Yes, yeah, so that has become quite the mystery. Surely, they must be around somewhere. The glasses were lost to the wolves. That is the only explanation. There is still one remaining place that you have not yet searched. But... Huh? What, what did you say? glasses were supposedly not found at the crime scene, leaving only one other possible place. What is this, you two? Have at you, Sir Blue Knight. Draw your blade and reveal to the court where the glasses are supposedly hiding. Uh, I like how they're so cocky and I have no idea. No, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get this. Looks like I've somehow managed to make it through my first switch for trial. It all comes down to this, the final piece of evidence. Time to clear up this case once and for all. I leave the rest in your capable hands, Mr. Wright. The piece of evidence pointing to the one place not searched tonight is... Tonight, there was one thing that was carried away from the crime scene right under everyone's noses. C carried away? I'm speaking, of course, about this. Ah! It... That's the milk bucket that disappeared from the crime scene. Thus far, the defense's claim that the glasses were dropped at the crime scene has... has been regarded as mere speculation. However... If Miss Kira, we find your glasses within the contents of this milk bucket, then our mere speculation will suddenly become fact. What, what manner of witchery? What are you talking about? You're crazy, just crazy. In no way could my glasses be inside that stupid bucket. That's just impossible. How about we quit with the speculations and actually find out? What are you saying, Inquisitor Barnum? Don't just waste the court's time. Don't listen to them. Don't. Tis mandated that the Knights of the Inquisition investigate any and all possibilities during the course of a trial. My lord, the Inquisition requests that this milk bucket be searched immediately. Very well. Oh. What? What? There it is. You're caught. <laughs> Miss Kira, as you can see, your glasses have been found inside the milk bucket. The truth is out. Nothing you say can change that now. Which leads us to the next question. Specifically, a question of when. When did you drop your glasses into the milk bucket? What? Why is this happening? This whole thing is ridiculous. The, the answer is obvious, isn't it? I dropped them afterwards. After I ran over to see the fire, I took a tiny peek inside that milk bucket. That's when they fell in. Objection! Don't be stupid, child. Snow and I were at the scene first. We made sure to take that milk bucket before anyone else could get their grubby little hands on it. 
We weren't going to let a single soul get anywhere near that sweet creamy bucket of deliciousness. You can bet my farm on that. Kill me, I'm the guy. <laughs> Each of these four witnesses has stated they heard the spell Ignace being cast at the time of the incident. According to the Grand Grimoire, Ignace summons a circle of flame within a one meter radius. The caster, in other words, the real witch, must have been at Miss Cantabella's side at the time of the incident. Indeed. That is when the glasses fell into the milk bucket. Therefore, there is only one logical conclusion. Only one person who could be the true witch. <laughs> Miss Kira, you are the real witch. Damn. Bucket to the face. Well, basket to the face. Flower basket thing. What a very strange trial this has been. From the very beginning, we have all paid witness to a most unusual set of circumstances. A baker turned defender, a surprise extra witness, and now a not guilty verdict for the accused. Never have I seen such a spectacle. I is this really happening? The girl inside the cage, you mean she's the real witch? But what about that Espella Cantabella girl? Miss Kira. Tell us why. Why were you trying to frame Miss Cantabella? You could easily have escaped the crime scene without a trace. There was no reason to frame anyone. This crime was a result of nothing but your overwhelming ill intent. To frame a person as a witch is to condemn that person to death by fire. Surely you must know this. So. Why Espella Cantabella? Do you have any idea what it feels like to be a witch? What it feels like? I didn't ask for this. I didn't ask for these powers, but I have them. And now here I am, begging for my life. I was living such a peaceful life until now. Selling flowers, getting scolded by my boss for not selling enough of them. That's why I was trying to put an end to these trials once and for all. Put an end to the trials? You all know what I mean! The one condition written in the story that will end these witch trials! When the great witch Bezella has been put to the flames and vanquished from this world, these trials will come to an end. This was my chance to finally end all this. At least that's what I thought. The sun had begun to set on that lonely forest path, and there wasn't a soul in sight. I always carried my hidden Talea Magica with me in case of a moment like this. I used my magic to expose that girl for what she really is. If I had been successful, then all these trials would finally end, and I could go on living my peaceful life. What? What? What are you saying? A am I hearing this correctly? Are you actually accusing Espella Cantabella? Why do you think no one has ever seen the legendary Great Witch? It's because she's been hidden in our midst the entire time. She's protected! She's hidden from us! It's all part of the story! A part of the story? Objection! That's enough! Speak no more. A witch's existence cannot be justified. No! Please! I know you've all noticed it too! You could end this! All of this! That girl! It's all because of that girl! I beg you! Please! She's... Please release me! Knights of the Court! Isn't it your duty to protect the people of this town? Give me another chance! That is where you're wrong. Huh? It is indeed a knight's duty to protect. We are impelled to protect the citizens of Labyrinthia against you and your ilk. The reason you were offered my protection until now was because your guilt was uncertain. There was the possibility that you were not a witch. The circumstances were such that it seemed another was guilty. 
That possibility has since disappeared, and your innocence along with it. You now find yourself at the other end of my sword. Vile <laughs> witch, enemy of Labyrinthia, may the fires purge you from this land! Hold it! Please, wait! Stop! Please, just stop this! Uh, uh, Stella! If... if it means putting an end to these horrible trials... Let me take her place. Let me be Bazella. Send me to the flames. But please, if it would save her life... This trial has proven beyond the shadow of a doubt that this flower seller, Kira, is a witch. And according to the law, all those found to be witches will be executed. Did he say executed? He can't mean... We just seen it coming in, Phoenix. You know it was, it was coming. This is most unsettling. Phoenix, ready to fire. No! <gasps> no! Don't do this! She's gone. <laughs> so far, we've always managed to pull off a win and get a not guilty verdict, but winning has never felt this depressing. Oh, Espella, are you alright? Yes, I just... I just want to thank all of you. You all came to my rescue yet again. Well, yeah, of course we did. Hold on a sec, Espella. What did you just say just now? You all came to my rescue yet again? You don't mean... Yes, I remember everything. I remember the last trial. I suppose that makes this the second time we've met, and the second time all of you have helped me. Mr. Wright, am I to infer that you and Aspella have met before? Uh, yeah, it seems that way. You too, Mr. Layton? Hmm, perhaps it would be best if we befret, be briefed each other on what has transpired. Okay, what should we discuss? Aspella paid us a visit in London. She had in her possession a letter from an old acquaintance of mine. Is that right? Mr. Accidente helped drive a spell straight out of Labyrinthia. You both kept me safe from the witches that were chasing me. Wait, did you say witches? So they appeared in London too? Regrettably, I am unable to say that our protection was absolute. When we saw you last, it seemed you managed to escape courtesy of the passing freighter. Uh, oh yeah, that's right. What happened to you after that, Spella? I rode the ship along the river for a while before arriving at a nearby port. And then... That's when I met Mr. Wright and Maya. I didn't know where the ship would end up. I, I felt very lonely out there. Please accept my sincerest apologies. I'm afraid there was nothing else I could do to prevent it. No, no, no. Please don't blame yourself, Mr. Layton. I just didn't know what to do, so I tried to look for something, anything on the ship that might help me. Boy, you sure found something, all right. Or rather, someone. You ran into a master thief working as part of the ship's crew. Yes, that's right. D did you say master thief? Crikey, that's amazing. I wouldn't exactly say it was amazing. After that, I was taken to court, and that's when Mr. Wright helped me. I see. Then perhaps... Somewhere deep within your mind must have existed a memory of that previous trial, and of Mr. Wright. Hence, why you thought to seek out his help when you 
found yourself in such an unfortunate situation. That makes sense. After all, Nick did make legal history. That Dane, jolly old England. D did you say he made history? Oh, wow, that's incredible, right, Professor? I wouldn't exactly say I made history. But then after that, I was never able to find my way back to the Professor. Even after I went through the pains of finding that clue, it ended up being taken away from me. A clue, you say? Yes, the tag that was hanging around the neck of that sweet little stuffed toy. That tag was a clue? A clue for what? I had a lot of time to think while I was on that ship. I thought about a lot of things. Like how to try and find a way back. Once the ship arrived at its destination, things like that. Find a way back? A way back to Mr. Layton and Luke. They were the only ones I knew I could depend on to help me. The pleasure was ours, Isabella. But no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't remember the name of the town where they lived. Huh? You mean London, Isabella? Oh, that's right, London. That's what was written in Carmina's letter to Mr. Layton. The blue teddy bear I found in that room was wearing a tag around its neck. Sorry, Espella, but PC Badger looks nothing like a teddy bear. On the tag is, in a very small letter, it was written London. I recognized the name of the town, and I thought it might be an address. That's because that stuffed toy was used in a special promotion, run by the London Metropolitan Police. Oh, that's right. Espella, you must have known that address was super important, so that's why you kept the tag, right? That way you could meet up with Mr. Layton and Luke again? I just felt so lonely and helpless. I wonder, though, who do you think really did it? Hit Olivia over the head with a pipe, I mean? What's this? Oh yeah, I guess we never did find out who the real culprit was. I do believe that may have some connection to the group of witches. But you mean the witches that were chasing us through London? Indeed. It could be that they noticed your escape on that ship and managed to infiltrate their own way aboard. C could it be? So you're saying there was some big scary witch lurking around the inside of that cargo hold? I'm afraid there's a rather high possibility that was the case. Those witches were intent on seeing you brought back to Labyrinthia, no matter what. However, in order to do so, they had to make certain you did not become entangled in any situation that may stall your capture. Ah, in other words, the situation was with Miss Al Dente, you mean? Precisely. They must have knocked that crew member unconscious and attempted to recapture Espella before the police could arrive. However, their plan was clearly foiled, given that you ended up in court regardless. And that's when she became my client. I, I just can't think clearly, remember anything. I just can't remember anything that happened back then. Do you think there's a possibility that someone was pulling a spell of strings through the entire trial? Hey, maybe you're right. There was something a little strange about a spell at the time. Mr. Wright. Espella was introduced to you at the time as a schoolgirl, is that correct? Yeah. She would have had no, no knowledge of the world outside of Labyrinthia. That being the case, having her stand in an English courtroom, as she was, would pose a serious, as she was, would pose a serious problem. Meaning that someone must have been attempting to cover up Espella's identity. What? But, Professor, could someone really do that? That they could, indeed, Luke. And if it is, as I suspect, I believe our adversary may be far more powerful than we originally thought. Just exactly who or what are we dealing with here? Hey, guys, let's head back to the bakery for now. I bet the boss is waiting for us with one heck of a pastry feast. Oh, uh, actually, I... I can't go home just yet. Huh? You can't? Aw. Well, there's still a couple of... 
legal procedures to be taken care of before I can go home. Please, you are going ahead without me. Is that so? Very well. I really must thank you all. Thank you so much for everything. Alrighty then, Espella. We'll catch you later. Yes. Farewell. For now. Why do I feel like I'm never going to see her again now? Mr. Wright, please allow me the pleasure of a proper introduction. My name is Herschel Layton. I'm a professor of archaeology in London. A, a professor? Huh? Well, my name is Phoenix Wright. I'm an attorney. As I suspected, you were no ordinary baker after all, Mr. Wright. Yeah, I thought it was pretty weird myself, to be honest. I mean, I really did believe I've, I'd been a baker all my life. But the more everyone kept saying it, the less sure I was that it was actually true. Just where did that memory come from, anyway? Hey, Professor. If Mr. Wright is an attorney, that must mean he's as smart as you, right? <laughs> I'm afraid I can't really say, Luke. Hmm, but... Behind every ace attorney, there's an even smarter, not to mention beautiful, witty, and utterly amazing ace assistant. <laughs> I think you also forgot humble. My name's Luke Triton. I'm the Professor's apprentice. I'm Maya Faye, and Nick here is my apprentice. Isn't that right, Nicky boy? Nicky boy? Hey, wait, why am I your apprentice? Anyway, we should all head back to the bakery. Let's get a move on. I'm sure Spella will be back before we know it. I would not get your hopes about that, Sir Blue Knight. In Inquisitor Barnum. Most impressive work tonight. It is a shame you have kept such ability hidden until now. Trust me, Nick's lawyer abilities beat the pants off his baking abilities any day of the week. Okay, moving on. What do you mean by that, Inquisitor? Why can't Espella go home? New charges have been brought against Mrs. Bella Catabella. What? No, no way. That can't be right. You have realized it, haven't you? She's being charged under suspicion of being the great witch, Bazella. She, she what? How can that be? Am I to assume that charge is based purely on Miss Kira's accusation? It was not I who made the decision. Huh? Regardless, the girl will return to court at the appointed time for further trial. Until then, I am to seek out any and all evidence pertaining to the great witch. Pardon me, Inquisitor. When exactly is this appointed trial? The investigation into this allegation will conclude on the day of the storyteller's next parade. That would be two weeks from today. Following our investigations into the matter, the trial of the Great Witch shall proceed. What the? It would appear the girl has been withholding a dark secret from you all. Espella. Isabella Cantabella's questioning is set to begin shortly. That means visiting hours are over. I recommend you leave immediately. Damn. Isabella, the legendary great witch Bazella? A story that dictates the fate of an entire town, and now a so-called great witch named Bazella. Most intriguing. It would seem to be up to us to uncover the answers to these mysteries. But how are we supposed to manage it all in two weeks? Where are we going to find any evidence? Hmm, you know, I was thinking. How do you address a great witch? Hell to thee, or a oh, magnificent magical one? Or maybe just, what's up, witchy baby? What difference would it make? She's called a great witch. It's not someone I'd ever want to meet. I believe I've thought of a solution to our problem. It's actually rather simple. P Professor Layton? Allow me to explain, Mr. Wright. The only way we may be able to solve the mysteries of this town and its residents is if we join forces. <clears throat> He's right. We've come this far. There's no way we're just going to give up on Espella. Okay, I'm on board. I look forward to teaming up with you, Professor. Me too, Luke. Um, me too, Maya. <laughs> Now then, shall we press on? This marks the beginning of our own story. One dictates. One dictated by ourselves and written by our own hands. 
Yay! The team up. <laughs> to be continued. The team has been assembled. We have to save Aspella Cantabella at all costs. The big mystery continues on. I hope you guys enjoyed. So he gave me 50 points for that one. Because of my my credibility was kind of crap, but it's fine. It's fine. I'm going to end this here, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. Leave a like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff in the next part. We see what happens, I guess. Um, it's getting crazy. I know that much. See you then. Bye.